News came out of Japan recently that their global money printing bandwagon got the volume turned up on it. And here to explain that in his spoken word piece is John Blank, our chief uh, equity strategist. Um, basically what happened is Bank of Japan in that announcement said they would buy long-term Japanese government bonds, right? That's correct. And they also put out an announcement that they're going to buy REITs, real estate, and they're going to buy actual ETFs. They're going to buy equities. So really extending what they already had in place as far as their version of quantitative easing was concerned. Correct. They're just going to put the weight on the long end and they're going to push hard to drive it down. So what's the deal with this? Why are they doing this? They are doing this, Terry, because they've had 20 years solid straight of deflation. So the Japanese GDP in money terms is lower today than it was 20 years ago. Even with the growth of GDP, the deflation of the prices taken in lower. So they have to basically get the incentives out there for people to buy. Because when you have a deflation, the incentive is to hold off. The house will be cheaper tomorrow. The car will be cheaper tomorrow. I'll wait and buy it. So they have to get that whole process turned around. Your stocks are going to go up. You got more money. Car prices are going to go up. Better buy now. Housing prices are going to rise. Better go get one. Mm -hmm. They want to get the domestic economy geared up. And that's what they're looking for. So all that deflation, bad. Little inflation for them, good. Correct. And that's the trick here is little inflation is 2% inflation, which okay. is a target that's in Europe and the United States and really all over the world. Yeah. Because these central bankers talk to each other. They're all talking to each other, watching each other. And everybody likes this 2% inflation target. So they're going to go there too. Problem is they're not there now and they're in deflation and they've been there 20 years. And how do they get just to there? And when does it say, gee, we're here at 2%, now what do we do? The economy doesn't stop for you. That's the problem is where are they going to get really and then how do they backtrack if they can? And if they can't, then what happens if they stay at 3 or 4%? Or what if they get to 1% and that's as far as they get with this program? These are all the nebulous issues. And none of them are ironed out and no one should think that they are. So this kind of signals a new philosophy for the Bank of Japan? It is. It's a very aggressive philosophy. It's a very unorthodox philosophy. And it's signaling to the markets that not only is the bank governor behind it, all nine voting members other than one were behind it, and the government, the, fin the finance ministry, the treasury, everyone's behind this. So the push is complete. There's just a washing of the regime here, completely washing this out of 20 years and saying, look, this is the new way. They call it abenomics actually in Japan, and they're going to stick with this. So quantitative easing in Japan, different from quantitative easing here in the United States. Why and how? Very different, Terry, for one main reason is that the Japanese economy is fully employed. They have a 4.5% unemployment rate. We have an 8% unemployment rate. So our quantitative easing says we have resources. Let's use them by getting more stimulus out there. Here, they don't need to get resources to work. They're working. Everything's working. They want to push everything into prices. So what happens in the economy is either you drive the volumes or you drive the prices or some mixture. But when you have all your fully employed situations in place in your capital markets, in your labor markets, in your product markets, mm -hmm. then everything plays out in prices. So the first thing that we know this has happened is the yen, which is a price that moves very quick on all external prices, has gone way up. And they're back to a five-year high on the, on the Japanese yen. So bringing it all back home here, how does this move impact investors here in the market investors here in the United States? Very interesting, Terry. What it means is that there are going to be trillions of dollars sitting in Japanese banks, which are not all domiciled in Japan. And they are just getting, getting electronic debits of money, and they're trading it for bonds. So what people will do with a trillion dollars of electronic debit money in a banking context will have implications way beyond Japan, because you will basically try to find a return. And it probably will play out mostly in the fixed income markets. But at the end of the day, they have said they're, they're buying ETFs and they have said they're buying REITs. So they aren't afraid of or even worried about getting real estate inflation and equity market inflation. They want all that too. Mm -hmm. But what we don't know is what happens outside these countries. But what should happen is the money will buy and drive down rates like the 10-year even further because people are going to buy a 2% 10-year with free money. Okay. So bottom line, positive, negative? I think it's positive until uh, until we find until out. Until it's not, until right? it's not, yeah. and that that I would that's the worry here is everybody's blessing it. I'm blessing it. 
all the news people have blessed it. The central bankers have blessed it all over the world. The problem with it is, is 2% target inflation is a beautiful idea, but trying to get there from 20 years to deflation has never been achieved. Okay, well, it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Breaking down quantitative easing in Japan with John Blank. I'm Terry Ruffalo.